Welcome to the Flame Test online lesson and virtual experiment designed for the AP Chemistry class at Don Bosco Technical Institute. This lesson has four goals. First, we will review the properties of light. Second, we will review the quantum mechanics model of electron orbitals. Third, we will observe the emission spectra from several flame tests. Finally, we will identify two unknown compounds based on their emission spectra. This slide shows a simple flame test. A sample of sodium chloride is put into a flame and the flame changes color. Additional information can be gained by analyzing the light with a spectroscope, which separates the light into an emission spectrum shown at the bottom of the slide. As you can see, the emission spectrum consists of individual lines rather than a continuous spectrum. What causes these emissions? In order to understand the chemistry behind the flame test, we must first review the nature of light and the quantum mechanics model of electron structure. There are two theoretical models for light. One model describes light as a wave of electromagnetic energy. Like any wave, it consists of an oscillation which repeats itself. The distance covered during one complete up-down cycle of this oscillation is called a wavelength, which is abbreviated with the Greek letter lambda, which looks like an upside-down y. Over time, the wave moves forward, and by observing the wave as it moves forward, we can calculate another important property of light, the frequency, abbreviated with the Greek letter nu, which looks like a V. Frequency is defined as the number of wavelengths moved divided by the time it took to achieve this movement. In this case, the wave moves forward two wavelengths. Light moves very quickly, so this movement only takes 3.2 times 10 to the negative 15th seconds. Thus, the frequency for this wave is the number of wavelengths, 2, divided by the time it took to achieve the movement, 3.2 times 10 to the negative 15th seconds. This comes out to 6.25 times 10 to the 14th hertz, which is the frequency of blue light. The final and most important formula for light as a wave is that the speed of the wave is equal to the length of each oscillation multiplied by the number of oscillations per second. In other words, the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. The speed of light is a constant equal to 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Several experiments conducted near the beginning of the 20th century could not be properly explained by understanding light as a wave. In these experiments, light behaved as a particle of energy. These particles are called photons, massless packets of energy traveling at the speed of light. Thus, our second theoretical model for light is that light is a photon. The energy contained in each photon is equal to Planck's constant abbreviated h times frequency. Planck's constant is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. So is light a wave or is it a photon? In reality it is both and this behavior is called wave particle duality. The duality allows us to use both the equation for light as a photon and the equation for light as a wave. Thus light has three properties wavelength, abbreviated lambda, frequency, abbreviated nu, and energy per photon. The two equations at the bottom of the slide relate these properties to each other. As long as one property is known, the other two properties can be calculated using these formulas. How does all of this explain our observations of the sodium chloride flame test? In order to complete our explanation, we need to look at the electron configuration of sodium. Quantum mechanics tells us that the electrons are arranged into zones with names like 1s, 2s, 2p, 
etc. These zones are called orbitals. Each orbital has a corresponding energy. The sodium ion has 10 electrons, which fill the orbitals starting from the lowest energy level. This configuration is called the ground state. When a sodium ion is put into a flame, one of the electrons uses the flame's energy to move to a higher energy level. This higher energy electron configuration is called an excited state. The electron only stays in the excited state for a few nanoseconds before falling back down to the ground state. As it returns to the ground state, it releases its extra energy as a single photon of light. Similarly, the electron could absorb more energy from the flame, which would excite it to higher energy levels. Again, the electron would collapse back down to the ground state while emitting a photon. The movement of an electron to a higher energy orbital and back is called an electron transition. Each of these transitions creates one of the lines on the emission spectrum. Using a spectroscope, the wavelength of the emission can be measured and the energy per photon can be calculated. The energy per photon is equal to the energy of the electron transition. For example, let's just consider the electron transition from 3D to 2P. Using a spectroscope, the wavelength of this emission is determined to be 467 nanometers. Using the formulas for light, the energy of this photon is equal to 4.26 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. The energy of the emitted photon is equal to the energy of the electron transition, and therefore the energy of the electron transition is equal to 4.26 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Pause this video now so that you can use the wavelength to calculate the energy of the electron transition on your own. You will not need to turn in this calculation, so just keep it in your notes. This logic works both ways. If you know that the wavelength of the emitted photon is 467 nanometers, then the energy of the electron transition is 4.26 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Similarly, if you know that the energy of the electron transition is 4.26 times 10 to the negative 19th joules, then you know that the wavelength of the emitted light is 467 nanometers. That was a lot of information, so let's summarize it. Light can act as both a particle and a wave. There are two important formulas for light. The first is that the energy per photon is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. The second is that the speed of light is equal to the wavelength times the frequency. Electron transitions use energy to move an electron from the ground state to the excited state and back. As the electron returns to the ground state, it emits a photon, and the energy of this photon is equal to the energy of the transition. Each line in emission spectrum is caused by a single electron transition. Finally, because the orbitals of each element are slightly different, each metal ion will have its own unique emission spectrum. This means that we can use the emission spectrum to identify an element. Now it's time to put this knowledge to work. In each of the remaining slides, you will see a video of a flame test and an emission spectrum. You must create a data table and record two types of data as you watch the video. First, record the color of the flame shown in the video. Second, record the wavelengths of the emission spectrum shown below the video. Many of the emission spectra are quite complicated, so you may need to pause this video. There are already some pauses built into the video during which there are no voiceovers. To fill these pauses, I have added some music, specifically the techno arrangement of the Tetris theme song produced by Andrew Lloyd Webber under the pseudonym Dr. Spin.
This is a flame test of barium chloride. I know you're going to dig this. This is a flame test of calcium chloride. This is a flame test of copper 2 chloride. This is a flame test of lithium chloride. Oh, 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 ah. This is a flame test of potassium chloride. Note the characteristic violet flame. Such a good feeling. Get ready for this. This is a flame test of sodium chloride. Note the characteristic yellow flame. This is a flame test of strontium chloride. This is a flame test of unknown A. This is a flame test of unknown B. This virtual lab does not require a formal lab report, but you will need to turn in a table of your data and answers to two analysis questions. Your data table should consist of a color for each flame and an actual number for the wavelengths of each line in the emission spectra. The two analysis questions are to first calculate the frequency and energy per photon for each of the lines in the lithium chloride emission spectrum. You only need to do this for lithium chloride not for any of the other emission spectra. Second, knowing that the two unknowns are among the known samples, you must identify the two unknowns. Use both the color of the flame and the wavelengths of the emission spectra to support your identification. Finally, you should memorize that potassium compounds produce violet flames and sodium compounds produce yellow flames. These facts have appeared on previous AP exams 
and you should expect them to show up on the next test. This concludes the flame test lesson and virtual lab. You may watch this video as many times as necessary. This final slide shows reference materials which were used to build this video.